Hello everyone, good morning. So uh, as was said, <coughs> I am a game developer, I make games. So today I will be speaking about video games, but I won't tell you anything about the future of video games. Today I will speak about my, fu my future, your future and future of the players. So. How to start? I will start with a question. Do you play video games? <coughs> yeah, sometimes I also play video games. And uh, why do you think we play video games? I think the most obvious answer is that we want to have fun. This is like why we play video games, most of us. But uh, what is this, this fun? So, uh, every game consists of gameplay mechanics. These are the things you normally do in the game. Sometimes it's just rotating some geometrical objects. Sometimes it's walking, jumping. Some games have shooting. Some games have dialogues. And, uh, oh. <clears throat> and uh, this is uh, what basically makes the games games. Players, they need to be shown what you can do in the game. They need to be teached what they can do. They have to learn the gameplay mechanics. And when they learn, the game must test what they have learned. They basically challenge them in using these mechanics. And as player is completing these challenges, as he, as he, winning, as he wins them, uh, it's, this makes the fun. This makes him feel good, this makes him happy. In life, it's kind of similar. You have to learn things, you are being tested what you have learned, you are being challenged, and if you succeed in these challenges, it makes you feel good. Um, so, basically, games, normally, you can imagine them as sequences of challenges. Basically, you go from one challenge to another, and as you progress, uh, the challenges grow. More difficult, and so on. Sometimes, the challenge may be too hard. Then it's frustrating. Sometimes, the challenge is too easy for you, because maybe you are very good. So then it's boring. So basically, uh, Game designers are trying to be somewhere in the middle. But uh, stacking up challenges one after another, it's not enough. This, this wouldn't be fun enough. That's why game developers are adding reward to the games. Sometimes it's just some coins, stars, jewels. Uh, in one game we, uh, we, we, we have hidden some foxes, stuffed foxes in the interiors of the game, so players would be looking for them. Uh, sometimes you just unlock new levels, new stuff. Uh, but what is... Game developers are trying to make uh, games interesting, so are, they are adding some flavor as well. They are adding some settings, some atmosphere, sometimes story. Because the, the greatest reward for the player is the experience. is the experience of playing the game. Well, uh, we humans, uh, we like experience. We like to do things. We are looking for 
having good experiences in our lives. But uh, in our lives, we, are, we can't do everything. We are limited to what we are, where we are. So it's, it's interesting for us to have virtual experiences. Because in virtual experiences, you can get to the stuff which you can't normally have in your life. So you want to do, you want to do new things which you can't do in your life. You are exploring new locations um, which you can't visit in your life. You are looking for new things which you can't see in your life. You are hearing uh, stories which can inspire you. Basically, you are living your virtual, virtual lives. And uh, why we like this? Well, because we are curious. And also, living these virtual lives, it helps us living our own. <clears throat> we just need imagination. So imagination, well, uh, when I was a little kid, there was not much things on a TV, and there were already computers and games, but I haven't got a computer myself. So I was reading books, because it was great for me to imagine these stories of, of these guys and imagine that I am them. Because with imagination, you can be, you can be a hobbit when you read a Tolkien's book. You can be James Bond when you watch some Hollywood movie. But in games, you can be more than that. Because in games, you have choices. So, basically, games gives you control. Gives you direct control on what you can do. Some old games were pretty simple. They, they were just, as I said, challenges one after another, sometimes spiced up with something. Game developers started to uh, putting the stories into the games, but it was in the same way as the stories of books or in, uh, in movies. The stories which were written by some authors and player was just revealing the story as he'd been playing the game. Just recently, the game developers started to using the power of video games, basically giving player the choices, the choices that can change the story, choices that can influence what will happen. And I think this is a very powerful thing, because you can shape up your experience in the game. You can decide what you will do. You will select what you do. And based on these choices, there are some consequences. The story can change. The challenges which you have in the game can be different. The overall experience is different. And again, there is an analogy to life. Because in life, we also have choices. A lot of choices. Like, uh, there are choices every hour, every day. Some of these choices which we have in our lives are trivial. It doesn't matter what we decide. But some choices, they are mm, important or they have consequences if we choose something. So uh, let me speak about my future, seen from the past, what choices I've been going through. So at the age of 13, when I was finally given a computer, and my father, he really wanted to give me a proper computer, so um, at this age where everyone has got these like, great 8-bit computers with lots of games, I was given a PC, PC XT. It was a great computer, but uh, after a like, year, I've got just like three games on it. So this was, very, this was not very good for me because I wanted to play. So that's why I started creating my own games. It wasn't something uh, uncommon because at the time, for example, in the popular kids magazine, ABC, which is still out there, <coughs> there were whole sections about programming. Basically, you've got a piece of code which you just copy to your computer and you run it and you have your game. So this is how I started. Well, was it really my choice? Yeah, well, some, somehow I decided to do it, but I was, I was directed by the, by the situation because, because I, there was lack of games on my computer, so I started creating them. 
As a game designer, I know that uh, I need to give direction to the player. I need to direct him to give him, to give him the best experience he can get. In good games, it's the player who decides finally what he does. It's not the designer who pushes you to some things. Well, in life, uh, as we said, there are some choices as well. And uh, there is designer of life, well, if anything like that exists. And this designer puts a lot of control to the hands of the man. He doesn't direct too much. So we can do anything. What do you want? You can decide what you want. And actually, you really can do it because um, it's possible. You just need to dedicate your time and uh, do your choices right, win your, ch win your challenges, and do it. Especially now with computers, with internet, it's also it's great. But you wouldn't get much further if you wouldn't get you would be alone. So, in my case, uh, the great thing for me was that <clears throat> I, started work, I started studying on a secondary grammar school, gymnasium in Brno, and our IT teacher, he let us use the newly equipped PC classroom every day, like every afternoon after school. So we gathered there, we played games, uh, but most of us, we just wanted to explore the computers, the possibilities. So we'll be, we'll be sit, we, we have been sitting there almost every afternoon and uh, been programming, trying some digital painting. We've been um, composing some digital music and exploring what we can do. And this is how I started my first um, game development team. I met my friend Peter there and we started to do games. So this, this was our first logo. Uh, actually, uh, I came up with this name because I really love the illustration of Zdenek Burian. Uh, but somehow, somehow I missed much the name of this uh, bird or lizard, flying lizard. And uh, we had this strange company name. So. Um, challenges which we've been through. Basically, the, <coughs> the worst challenge is to start. You need to start something. Uh, and also, um, you, need to, you need to progress from on what you have started, and you also need to finish it. And actually, the progressing and finishing, sometimes it's more difficult than starting, and many projects felt on that. So actually, it's important uh, that you decide your challenges well. And as I spoke about learning, I think it's good to start with learning. So what we did in the past was that we wanted to try some projects. So we came up with something very simple, just few screens connected together without story, with a bit of interactivity. It was done in two weeks and it was finished. It, you can play it from start to end. Of our second test was something more complicated. We've got our kind of technology already working. We've got the little character on the screen which could walk from one side to the other, to another. But there were just again few screens, um, no big story. But all the gameplay mechanics were in place, and we did it in like um, two months, and it was working. So then we started to uh, work on another test which was, uh, we just wanted to prove that we are able to create some content, create something. Uh, and we started to work on this game, uh, which was inspired by the great Lucas Games uh, classic, Secret of Monkey Island. And we worked on it two years. Oh, you can't see anything, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we work on it to almost uh, like a year at least, and uh, actually, it was um, it was quite good on the end. So we thought mm, maybe we can show it to the world. And uh, there is a funny story. Uh, at the time, I was still in school, and we we have been on the school trip in a small city of Polichka, 
And you know, on these school trips, teachers let you uh, give you some free time, and you can like roam around. So we we were given like two hours in the main square of Polička. Most of my schoolmates they headed to some stores or pubs, and I just recall that uh, I saw some advert in a, in some gaming magazine about the guy who was selling games. So I thought, hmm, maybe this guy, and th the guy actually lived in this city. So I thought, hmm, maybe this guy could uh, distribute our game. So I decided to try and speak to him. Uh, but unfortunately, I haven't got the advert with me, so I just barely knew the address. I, I know the street name. So I just went there, like in some adventure game, and I was exploring. I was speaking to some local guys on the street, trying to imagine or get the information where I can find this, this guy. And I found the flat. I rang the bell, and I was waiting there. You can imagine me with this like outdoor clothes for the, for the trip. Uh, I even haven't got the game with me, because I haven't planned that. But well, actually, I tried it, and it worked out. And the game was, was we, find, we find this guy. He became our um, distributor, our publisher. Actually, he was just a skillful guy, not much older than we were at the time. And this is how the first game, first PC adventure game was uh, born. So as you can see, uh, it, the first distribution was in this like these plastic bags uh, with a with a one disc inside, uh, but it was it was great for us. So we thought that uh, that was a good start, and we wanted to move on. Uh, our next thing, uh, we were given basically the finished story, and our goal was just to produce the game. And because we had the technology and we knew how to do it. We did this one in about four months. And again, the challenge was sufficient, uh, and we succeeded. The game was finished, released, and everything was great. So then we realized that, cool, now we know how to make games. So let's do something great, something, some of these big projects that we've dreamed about all the time, something, uh, something that wasn't done before. So we started working on this big project. But uh, the challenge was too much. And with these challenges, you can get easily distracted and derailed from your path. And we failed. So uh, this was a good lesson for us. But uh, because we were just students, it was OK for us. Uh, and in a year after that, we managed to get some other uh, work. Another contract work. Uh, this one was for German uh, German publisher. We worked directly for them, and it was hmm. <laughs> it was game which was based on some um, uh, book uh, which was released in Germany, and uh, the design was done by a German designer. It was another adventure game. Again, very ambitious. So we started working uh, from our home. Then we rented our first offices. And eventually, on the end, we moved to Germany to work on it there with, with these guys. And it was, it was difficult. It was difficult. The game was just too big. And these guys were not so experienced as well. So we failed this one. The project was stopped. Uh, but. What we managed to do is uh, we started to be professionals. We started working on it full time. So um, we met some good people there. We managed to finish uh, another project. And it was a good challenge for us and good experience. Then I decided that uh, I have enough of Germany and I want to move back to Czech. So uh, me and my friend Michael, which I met in Germany, we decided uh, to go back to Czech Republic and set up our own studio. So this is how the Pterodon, the official company, game development company, was set up. And uh, we were doing some projects. We were, um, like in a year, we've been employing like 15 guys. And it was, it was interesting. But 
Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, there are some pictures. So this one was uh, the game for the for the German publisher again, uh, real-time strategy game, fantasy setting. And this one was the Flying Heroes, uh, which was f you. The, the game was quite strange because uh, you've been like on uh, flying lizards, flying teapots, flying carpets, or flying birds, and you was you as a player was uh, fighting in some arenas, in some tournament. Uh, so we've been working on these things, but uh, then I started to have some doubts. Is it really what I want to do in my life? Uh, like work all day long till the end of my days. I was just 20, 21 at the time, so I thought, hmm, maybe I want to want, maybe I want to have some fun, uh, some students' experience, to have some freedom. So I decided to start university and just do my company and projects on the side. So studying architecture was great. Uh, and I really thought that I will abandon games for good. Uh, but then new challenges appeared and uh, new level with my wife and my baby daughter. So I uh, have to quit my wild student's life and I had to go back to games. <laughs> <laughs> to do some work, to be responsible. Uh, and well, uh, here I am. I'm still doing games. Some years have passed. I've made some games. I get some experiences. My kids are now teenage and uh, I still love my wife. Uh, and you know, I've I've learned some things, and I'm always learning. I'm always like putting down new challenges, and I'm experience and experiencing, enjoying the path. So, uh, as a designer, I know how to make games. I know that I need to show players what they can do. I need to teach them how they can do it. And then I need to put some challenges that will um, give these players a test whether they've uh, mastered their skills properly. Also, uh, I designed some choices for the player so he can decide what to do. He can decide what experience he will have. I have some story there in the game. And I am trying to design it some sense and meaning so the players uh, can really enjoy it. I'm basically preparing the future for the players. With life, it's a little bit more complicated than in games. Um, but I believe that life is also designed with sense and meaning. Uh, in the same way as I'm trying to design my games. Which gives me, gives me some uh, kind of understanding of, of what I need to learn what challenges I can get, what experience I can um, encounter, and uh, I can understand the life. It can help me with the choices which I'm doing. So, uh, have you played some game which I was describing with these choices and story? So, in these games, uh, you are free, you are trying different solutions, you are experimenting with the game, you are doing whatever you like. Uh, you are not afraid because you know that the game is designed for you to be entertained and you have faith in the game designer. You are enjoying the game. But uh, sometimes in your lives you may Hold back your creativity. Hold back your decisions, your progress. Because you are afraid. You are scared of the challenges, doubtful about the choices, and you are losing the experience. But you should not be afraid. It's your life. And obviously there will be 
hard times. There will be challenges, obstacles, and some game overs, maybe. You will overcome them playfully. But <clears throat> you need to, you should not be scared. You should just explore your life, uh, immerse into it, shape it up, and uh, enjoy it as you enjoy games. Because, because life, it's uh, just a game. So you should go out and play it. And So thanks for your attention, and uh, if you have some questions, I'm here to answer them. I bet you have questions. Just raise your hand, and I will run to you with the second microphone. Uh, good morning. Uh, you were talking a lot about the choices you make in the games, and the sense of freedom the player should have during the game. So what do you think about a situation about, uh, I suppose you heard of it, a Mass Effect ending, where people uh, were so un uh, dissatisfied with the consequences of choices they made that they pushed the developers to change the actual ending. What do you think of it? And the consequences uh, in game developing. Thank you very much. Well, uh, first I would say that it's always difficult to uh, end some triple A game with a, some bombastic ending and uh, make it that you will have many of these endings. So, uh, and I think uh, I haven't played the third one, third Mass Effect, so I can't tell. Uh, but I think sometimes the players. Um, they just need to be satisfied with the, with the experience on the way, with the choices which they made on the, uh, during the game and what, what it brought to them. In the ending, it's, I would say, just the cherry on the top. Some games still are basically, they give players a lot of possibilities. You can go left, you can go right, but then actually you return to one spot. So it's just fake choice. And they just tell the story as they prepare it for you. Uh, sometimes it's made nicely, so if you play it just once, you don't recognize it. But if you play it several times, you will notice that something wrong is going on. So yeah, it's, it's difficult. We, we are not there yet. We are, this is the future of uh, game development. <laughs> we are trying to tackle this. So there are some attempts, some uh, successful, some less successful, but we are trying as game developers. Hi, I'm Jean Troyan. Games do have a bad reputation, though, especially children playing games, violent games. But there's a great TED talk by a woman games designer. I don't remember her name, unfortunately. But she claims that games are actually good and we should be playing more, that they prepare us for life, especially children. Do you agree with this, that, that there are skills that kids are learning while playing video Absolutely. Games. I totally agree with that. Uh, well, I was speaking about learning and testing. This is actually the domain of schools. This is traditionally schools are trying to teach us something and test us something. But look at our schools, for example, here in Czech Republic. I have kids in school, so I know what's going on there. So basically, kids are being like, told to memorize some stuff. Sometimes they even don't understand what's going on, why they are doing it. And then someone is testing them, and they don't know why. They just want to have some good marks in their, in their uh, Žákovská knižka. Uh, <laughs> and that's, that's it. But uh, the point of learning is that we are prepared for life. That we have things which we can use in our lives. And this is what schools should uh, prepare us for. Games, obviously, they can do the same. They can learn us some things which can be useful for us. So what I've been talking about is the, is the ability to decide, uh, think about your options, do some decision, and then see what this decision uh, means for you. This is one thing which you can experiment in games. 
But uh, there are some other things. There are great games which are the gameplay mechanics is actually counting mathematics. So basically, the way how you progress through the game is you are um, counting numbers. So basically, you are learning how to count. And I think it's quite useful to know this. So uh, it depends on the games. Obviously, there are some games which uh, you may say, hmm, maybe not so great for our kids. Maybe they should even not play them because of the blood which is like pouring down from the monitor down to the carpet. But um, I think it's parents' responsibility to um, also explore the games and be able to say which game is good and which game is not. And let, play, uh, let the kids play the right games, not the wrong ones. Good morning. Uh, my question is, what was your uh, main inspiration for the game Sedm Dní and A Sedm Nocí? <laughs> well, as I said, uh, this was contract work, so we've been given a finished story. And the inspiration for that was obviously the Syria's uh, Larry's adventures. And we just... Actually, uh, it used... The original plan was that the game will be done on Amiga and we, Pterodon software, will do just conversion for PC. But the Amiga team was uh, progressing quite slowly, so basically we just did it and they haven't finished it, we, we did. So um, we, our inspiration was like, here's the papers, do it. So, so did you invent it the, uh, the main challenge of the game? Or Which was? <laughs> which was, uh, you know, what was <laughs> uh, to um, make love. Uh, yeah, we did some design choices and we created some challenges, yeah. <laughs> but um, funny thing was that um, when I was in Germany, we wanted to um, release the game there, uh, just to um, our, the publisher which, we were, which we've been working with. It was uh, two years after we did the game in Czech. And uh, there, there is in Germany uh, is a um, state office which basically uh, checks the content of games and gives some marks, how suitable is it for kids. And this game, Seven Days, Seven Nights, was given a score 18 plus, And the description was a really terrible game. It's showing sex as a sport and creating the image of a woman and a lot of like uh, very... Um, very description about the game. Uh, funny, f so it was recommended for uh, 18 players, uh, for players of age 18. Uh, but at the time we were just 17. So, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, after two years of finishing my game, I wasn't able to play the German version because I was <laughs> not uh, old enough. And maybe uh, your most favorite game so far? Not you made, but. Uh, my yeah. favorite game of Thank all times is Another World, a game by Eric Tahi. He did the game completely by himself, music, art and programming and it's still, it's like 23 years old, 22 years old and it's still, you can still play it and have fun. Good morning. Uh, what is your dream uh, like for the future connecting games with the real life? Because now you have oh, almost have Google Glass, which is like a hut. You have Foursquare, which is showing you where to go, where to have fun. You, have, you are give, uh, given points uh, when your watch uh, shows you where to run or how to get a workout and so on. So you already have some kind of rewards and games in your life. And what do you mean, uh, what do you think that uh, you as a game designer uh, can take a place in this? Like how to connect life uh, with the games? Do you have some kind of dreams? Well, uh, I, I have a plan, not as a developer, but as a player for the future about this. My plan is that when I'm old and I'm in my pension, which I will be like age of 120, uh, the technology will be so advanced uh, that although my body will be completely wasted and I couldn't move, I will have this like cable and I plug it into my head and I will connect to some 
massive on, massive multiplayer online game, and I will be running again with the elves and uh, enjoying the experience, which I can't because I don't have time for that now. But I imagine that this will be uh, my my gaming experience when I will be old. That's rather nice. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, I will use the opportunity. Do you, do you play board games? And what's your view on board games? What, what games? Desk, deskové hry? Uh, yes. Uh, I think board games are very uh, important for game designers because board games, uh, you have to put your rules, rules of your game uh, clearly on a piece of paper in a way that the players before uh, playing the game can read it and understand it, which is different for, from the computer games because video games you can exp you can um, introduce new rules as you play but board games you have to teach everything on the, on the beginning but the, what is similar is that you do rules for um, in all games so designers game designers are it's good training for them to uh, design board games and it's also good fun to play because I can play with my kids I can play with my friends and it's interesting yeah. Thank you. Okay, last chance, last question. No one? Okay. Uh, so, as you said, uh, kind of in games, it's very important that you start from the beginning, kind of with some basic challenges, and then the challenges progresses. And you keep learning from the beginning, and then it kind of keeps you motivated as, as the challenges progresses. So. Have you been perhaps sometimes approached and maybe why don't we use uh, kind of digital uh, devices uh, or why don't we de uh, design user interface of digital devices as a, as a game? So for example of smartphones um, or the interactive TVs like volume up 10 points, you go to the next level. Set up your internet connection, 20 points, you go to the next level. Wouldn't it kind of keep us more interested in using all the functions of the of those devices and kind of keep us l learning and, and progressing in that like game which will uh, teach you how to use the device you mean yeah kind of kind of uh, y learning to use the device as a game yeah I think it's a great idea and you should go to Samsung or uh, <laughs> the other company Apple and propose it to them maybe they will do it I was just asking if you maybe had some experience with that. Or no, well, I'm doing these like big story games. Um, this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there are obviously people uh, developing for mobile platforms, smaller games. Actually, now it's a good time. It's kind of what used to be for PC gaming 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Now is the similar situation on mobile platforms. So if you have you guys, you have a small team, I think it's a good time to start developing your game and you can do it probably for consoles because the games are just too too big. But you can go for, uh, for these uh, mobile platforms and you can be successful there. So if you have idea like this, just go for it and maybe you will be on some school trip in Polichka and <laughs> you will find your publisher. Okay, thank you all, all for coming. Uh, as you heard from the talk of Jarek, don't go to pubs, challenge yourself, then the future is bright. So huge applause for Jarek. Thank you for coming. See you in a month, hopefully. Great morning. <laughs>